One of the things that I'm most proud of off the ice is my son Noah grew up not liking hockey, probably because it meant that his mom and dad were always in the rink and he was just getting carted around from surface to surface. So every Olympic final he brought a, when he could start to read, he brought a book, Harry Potter, and he would read Harry Potter in the stands and never watch the hockey games. And then in the, in the final Olympics I played in Sochi, when I walked out to the tunnel, I looked to the right and I saw my son there dressed all Canada, his face painted, and uh, he had a sign, let's go mom, let's go Canada. And he actually watched the whole game and cheered, my mom told me so. One of my proudest moments was just being able to share that moment with him. I guess I shouldn't say I never thought I'd work in the NHL. I just thought that after I finished playing, I would go into medicine and that would be it. It really wasn't something I sought out or I looked for. I started med school and then a couple months later I got a call from Kyle Dubas and they're asking me if I would be interested to work here. Yeah, I love my role with the Leafs as uh, Director of Player Development. We have a great team of eight of us. We work with the players both on and off the ice to try to help them get better. From prospects to the Marlies, uh, right up to the Leafs. On any given day you never know who you're going to be with. I could be watching a prospect play in Sarnia to stepping on the ice at Coke with a Marley to work on the power play with Morgan Riley so you just never know and uh, one of the fun parts of our job is we get to really be on the good side of helping players and, and um, in their corner to try to help them succeed. Going back to medical school at the age of 38 uh, was not an easy thing. I had to learn how to learn again. But the one thing I did have in my back pocket was I knew how to work. I knew how to time manage myself and I knew to ha how to handle pressure. So the stress that maybe others felt, I didn't feel as much because I had been through so much already. It's just medicine is the hardest things getting in. And the second hardest thing is the day-to-day -day grind of just learning, keeping your head on and not getting bogged down by too many details that you can never know everything at once. So so it's definitely hard, but it's a different kind of hard. Well, I think hockey is sort of the last bastion of pro sport that still has to evolve. It is typically still a, a white male sport. Uh, it's definitely come a long way. Uh, the women's game in Canada, I think, has really pushed the boundaries and challenged a lot of beliefs in hockey. Uh, we still have to be more inclusive in just about every area. The way that I think that you do that is you start at the grassroots and, you know, we've got to expose the game to new Canadians. We've got to make the game more affordable somehow so that the barrier to entry is lower for kids and people that normally wouldn't be able to afford it. It's, it's becoming more of a a wealthy game. A pair of skates costs $800 and a stick is like $150 plus dollars. So these things are, are really hard for families that can't afford it and you're missing out on a lot of talent and a lot of love for the game. I think a women's professional league would be great for the game. You could charge a family of four about a quarter of what they would have to pay to go to an NHL game and be able to see the same product. there, And then more visibility um, in the media and on television outside of just NHL hockey. I think for a women's professional league as an example. In all areas of the game and going into non-traditional countries, uh, non-traditional pockets of our country in terms of ethnicities too, to show people the game. I traveled to India once and took the game to the Himalayas at 13,000 feet. And it was one of the most incredible experiences I've been a part of. And people love the game there just like they love it here. So Wickfest is a, a love project of mine, a passion project. They started it after the 2010 games in Vancouver. 13 years in running, we've had to cancel it for the last two years because of the pandemic, which has been tough. But we've reached over 30,000 young girls from the ages of five to 18. It's not just a hockey tournament, it's a festival of the game where they get to sign up for off-ice sessions and mental training and fitness and um, education around the game. And we bring in some of the top uh, talent from the women's team, the NHL coaches to help the kids to teach them and mentor them so it's a it's a truly uh, fun inclusive event and we've had countries like Mexico Italy India and all over uh, North America teams coming to participate so it's been an awesome adventure life is not fair and things are not always equal and nor do they always have to be equal but I think opportunities for people are sometimes lopsided and equity is about giving people across the board access to the same resources and opportunities giving one person that access and giving the other person that access and equity is about being open-minded having mentorship and championing opportunities for others to have the same opportunity